Okay, let's start off with running. You guys know the drill. And then punches. Keep your feet moving. I don't care what punches you do. I do jab, cross, hook, uppercut just because it makes sense to my brain from a more up point of view. <clears throat> but as long as your hands are up and your feet are moving, I don't really care what punches you do. Okay, then feet, you're here. Step out and in. Something back there is squeaking. knees. Now when you do this, think about keeping this one bent. It helps you keep your balance and it puts more stress on that leg so you're doing more work. Other side. and ladder steps. So visualize a ladder, or if you have an agility ladder and you want to put it on the floor, but you're stepping through the rungs and then picking your knee up. So you got to pick your knees up. Even if you have a flat, like a agility, my agility ladder is plastic slats with a, like a, not a cord, but it's flat, just a flat rope. And if you don't pick your feet up, you get them caught. Kicks, front, side, back. And if you get your feet caught and you screw the rope up, then you have to do more because you don't get to cut your time down because you messed up the ladder. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to turn the video off and start the music playing. And while the music is playing, you're gonna do two more rounds. 30 seconds each, running, punches, in and out steps, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Two times through, 30 seconds each. Now when you're done, turn the video back on and come back to me to stretch. So to stretch, reach up. Over to one side. Other side. Put your hands here. Clasp your fingers together. Push your shoulders back. And lift your hands. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Now with your feet here, relatively close together, turn, I have both heels on the floor, my knees are straight, pull your chin down, your chest down to your front knee. Normally we do this stretch much more extended, but with your feet close together, you get more of a stretch in your hamstring. Make sure you keep your chin up. Then push back and stretch your hip flexor. to the center, toes straight forward, knees out, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. So chin is up, then turn your feet, keep the knees straight, keep your chin up, chest down towards the front knee. Push back, stretch your hip flexor. 
then have a seat. Put your bottoms of your feet together, and then take your hands and tuck them right up against your back here so that you're not end up, you don't want to scrunch your back like this. I actually, my feet are sliding, so I'm gonna put them against the, chair, the table and then put my hands here to keep my back straight and the sun is in my eyes, so get closed and push your knees down. And then you have to put your feet out, come over to one side. So what I'm doing here is my ribs are coming down towards my thigh, They're coming to the side. Then you're going to come up and you're going to turn the front of your chest towards your knee and reach out and grab again. And same thing on the other side. Turn towards your knee. Now we're gonna reach to the center, and when you do this, I don't want you to do this. Okay, I want you to lift your chin and push your chest forward so your back is flat and reach your elbows toward the floor. If you've got that and it's easy, pull your feet in closer and still reach your elbows to the floor. And then if you need more, put your feet together and put your elbows on the floor on the outside. And pull your feet in. Heels are on the floor. Rock back and forth. Okay, this is easier feet apart, knees apart, toes pointed straight forward, feet closer together is harder. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, three exercises. Um, I'm gonna show them to you. And then again, I want you to stop the video, turn the music on, and do each one of them for a minute. Okay, the first one, I'm gonna, I think you can see me okay. The first one are inchworm push-ups. So you do the inchworm push-up. You start here, you bend down, you put your hands on the floor, you walk them out to the plank. You do a push-up. You walk them back in. You stand all the way up. Walk them down. Okay, you can do on your knees if you want. In either case, your back has to be flat and your chin has to be up. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is toe touch sit-ups. <clears throat> so you're gonna start here on your back, straight out. I'm gonna come up. My right hand is gonna touch my left foot. Then my left hand touches my right foot. So opposite foot down. Okay, and the third one is a lunge front kick. So what I want you to do is I want you to step back to the lunge and then ideally, right from here, up to the front kick, and back down on the same side. So ideally, your foot is only touching in the back. Okay, if that doesn't work for you, here, 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 and down. Okay, so like I said, stop the video, turn the music on, a minute each, into our push-ups, toe touch sit-ups, and lunge front kick. Okay, so this month we are working on focus. So we're gonna do a few techniques and then we're gonna put them into a focus drill. <clears throat> okay, so the first one that we're gonna do is just jab across. You've done that with me lots of times. What I want you to do right now is focus on your target, focus on correct body mechanics and focus on your target. Okay, so when I'm doing this, my target is someone who's the same height as I am, knows, or throat. So I start here. I'm in my fighting stance. Heart foot's on the floor. Back foot's on the floor, but my heel is off the floor so that it, I can rotate and push off that heel. So I rotate here for the jab and again for the cross. Hands are up. So let's do 10 sets. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten on the other side. One, two, three, four, five.
five, six, seven, creaky spot on the floor, eight, nine, ten. Okay, save that. We're going to put it away and we'll bring it back. Then we're going to do a front kick. Okay, when you do a front kick, <clears throat> standing in your guard stance, you chamber your knee up, you push your hips forward into the kick. So it's not so much that I'm leaning my upper body back as I'm pushing my hips forward, which throws my lower body back some. I'm hitting with the ball of my foot. If I'm in bare feet or the whole bottom of my foot if I'm wearing shoes, don't hit with your toes. Okay, so here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then one more set of techniques. This one is going to be a chop and a spear. So what I'm doing, the first one is a chop. I'm hitting with this surface of my hand. And the second one is a spear. And I'm hitting with the tips of my fingers. So the chop is hitting the person who's my target in the side of the neck. And then the spear is coming straight in and hitting in the dent in the throat. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so for the next part, first you need to get yourself a paper. And you need to put three different things on the paper, okay? So I got blue, green, red. You could have circles, stars, and squares, or if you or put stickers on, I don't care what they were. So I need to have three different things on the paper. Okay, so then you need to get a partner. I'm gonna do in the order that I did things, blue is jab cross, green is front kick, red is ch uh, chop and spear. Okay, so your partner is going to pull the target out and they're gonna call out a color. So if I say blue, you're gonna do jab cross. So you don't have to pull it away. You just call a different number every time. Green, you're gonna throw a front kick. Blue, jab cross, red, chop, spear. Okay, so I want you to do that with your partner. I want you to do about 25 sets, okay? And then come back and I have a completely different thing we need to work on, also based on focus. Okay, so I'm gonna crank this down because I'm gonna be on the floor and you need to see me. Okay, so um, in the Tungsten curriculum this cycle, we're doing rolls and break falls and a ground defense. Um, most of you guys, can put your head down and roll, okay? That's not what I'm looking for right now. What I'm looking for is technique. We're working on focus, focus on the technique. And then I want you working on your core strike so that you're in total control all the way through the roll. Okay, so I want you to start here. I roll over my right shoulder. Um, I can only cartwheel over my left, I can only roll over my right. Ideally, you can do this on both sides. You're gonna have to play with that a little bit. Okay, so I roll on my right shoulder. Put my right knee on the floor, and I say put the left one here, but you're actually gonna probably have to stick it out to make this work. Then I'm gonna take the back of my right hand, put it on the floor, push it back between my feet, and put my shoulder on the floor. If you ever put the top of my head on the floor, it doesn't work. If I start here, I have to drop, and then there's impact. Okay, so I'm here. I actually put my shoulder on the floor, and then with the back foot, I push. Okay, straight comes with practice. You may find yourself, as you start, going off to one side or the other. That's 
Some of that's flexibility and some of it's core strength. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start here. You may have to do this, you probably have to do this lots of times, even if you've done it, even if you can do a roll, slowing it down and controlling it like this is very different. So here, right hand down, right shoulder in. A lot of you guys are gonna get here, you're gonna go, I can't do this, I can't do this, and you're gonna put your face down. It doesn't work with your face down. You can't roll over your face. You gotta tuck your chin. So if I'm going over my right shoulder, I take my head and put my ear, left ear on my left shoulder, Put my right shoulder on the floor. And then very slowly push over. Okay, then I'm gonna go back the same way. When I go back, you don't wanna go straight back over your neck. Okay, I'm gonna go over my shoulder just like I did before. So I'm gonna start here. I'm going to push so that right here, you see I'm on my shoulder. Exactly the same place that I started my front roll. Okay, so what I would like you to do you start here and roll forward nice and slow and controlled and then roll back the same way okay so i want you to do that a few times then i want you to lay flat out i don't know if i have room to do this flat out okay, i want you to lay flat out i'm going to take i roll over my right shoulder so i'm going to take my right shoulder I'm going to tuck it in. I'm going to take my hands, bring them up, and push myself over. Then I'm going to go back the same way. I'm going to start here completely flat out. I'm going to bring my feet up, pull them over the back, come over, and go flat out. Okay? I want you to do those. I want you to do lots of them. I want you to practice them so you can do them without thought. Okay, then if you get it, um, I have two things I want you to do. Okay, the first one is just to give you the idea of circles. Okay, so I'm gonna start off sitting here, feet apart, I'm gonna grab under my knees, and I'm gonna roll down onto one shoulder, across my shoulder blade, and up onto the other shoulder. Down onto my shoulder, Cross the top of my back onto the other shoulder. Okay, one shoulder down, across the top of my back, onto the other shoulder. Shoulder down, across the top of your back, and back up. So what I'm doing here is I'm rolling from this shoulder across my upper back and back onto the other shoulder. Okay, it looks kind of weird. You're going, why is she making us do this? This actually, if you're gonna be doing any ground defenses, if you're defending yourself and you end up on the ground, having this kind of core is requires a ton of core control. So we're working on focus this month. So I'm focusing on using my core muscles to keep myself balanced in the air. I'll show you this from a couple of different angles. You can look at this and you go, there's no way I can do that. Try it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in a position like we just did that roll. One shoulder down, across my upper back, onto the other shoulder. So I'm going to start here, shoulder down, and cross my upper back, down onto the other shoulder. Okay? So here, I put my shoulder down exactly if I was setting up for a roll. Okay? So I can knee, foot out, hand down. I'm going to roll. Instead of over, I'm going to go sideways across my upper back and come up on the other knee. Okay, that's the challenge. If you do this video, what I wanna see for credit is you try that. Even if you can't do it, I wanna see you try. Okay, I'm working on focus this month. And what I want you to be focusing on is where your body is moving as you do your forms. So focus on controlling your whole body. Not just thinking, okay, I'm gonna throw my arm up and do a high block, but where it's coming from and why it works. Okay, so we're going to start with the white belt form, one of the white belt forms, basic form two. We look, we chamber. The reason for that is that our entire body is covered so there's no open targets. Turn, block, focus on your stance. Make sure that your shoulders are square, your feet are as wide apart as they are front to back, and your toes are all pointed in the same direction. Step and punch. Look, chamber. Make sure you have that cross body chamber. Step, block, 
Step and punch. Look to the front. Full cross body chamber. Block. Now when you do these next blocks, don't chamber here. Okay, make sure that you keep your shoulders upright and you rotate your body away. Step into Soho Rukhtasi and then you can rotate your body back in. So you have the rotation to bring the power into the high block. So then one, two, one, <clears throat> two, one, focus on keeping your shoulders level, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. Okay, so if you're white belt, I want you doing practice in basic form one and basic form two, just like that, at least three times each through. Um, thinking about your targets, thinking about your stances, thinking about your body position. Okay, um, orange and blue. One of your forms this cycle is ping on a showdown. So we're doing the same thing. Focus on the details, focus on the target, focus on control and where your body is in space. So one, just like basic form one or basic form two, two. One, we do the low block. Somebody grabs my hand, I pull it in. Okay, so my palms are facing me and the right hand that I pulled in that's gonna strike with is on the inside. My feet are in a teeny little cat stance. There's really essentially almost no weight on this foot. And this heel, the right heel is leaning on the left ankle. Back fist, fall forward and punch. Okay, make sure you control that fall so that you're actually in a good chimbal chassis. If you don't control it, and you end up out here, that's, you're gonna get hit in the face. Okay, so make sure you're controlling where you put yourself. One, make sure you re-chamber so that you have hips to drive that second strike. Two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now when you do these four blocks, the chamber is 180 degrees off the strike. So the first strike is there. So the block is there. There's no circles, it's all straight angles. Block, chamber here. Step back, plant your weight on both feet. Then settle into the block. Settle into the cat stance as you block. Next target's there, so the chamber's there. My hands aren't circling, they tuck in, they shoot straight back, they, I step, hands tuck in, and block. Next one is there. Look, chamber, step, block, and the last one is there. Look, chamber, step, block. Okay, so if you're an orange belt or a blue belt, um, basic form three, and ping on showdown, five times each. Um, green, brown, red, chill sun, Eero. Okay, what I want you focusing on today, especially through the low stances, is not putting your butt on the floor. Because a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys have butt on the floor. A lot of you guys do not have butt on the floor. Whether or not you do, it's more important to have your back straight. So today I'm gonna to show you back straight, even if you're not going way down, okay? I want you to be thinking about stances. So this first one targets in front of me. Okay, somebody choked me. Toad, which means my knees are straight forward, my toes are, actually, they're pointing forward, they're pressed out. If you can understand that distinction, toes are pointed in a little bit. Hands come up to the height of my shoulders and they open as if there's hinges here and a door opening. Index, step back. So I'm in Chimbalchasi facing the front. And as I rotate to the triangle chassis facing side, my hands are traveling. So I set the palm strike, palm strike to the solar plexus as I set my stance. Feet come in, I step back out. Now my target's to the side. So I need to be in Soko Rip Chassis, chop, step and punch. Okay, so now next move. Hands are gonna chamber, they're both palms up. They circle and they're gonna end both palms down. Okay, this is not legit. Butt on the floor is where I would like you. My back is flat here. 
or here, but back is flat in either case. Right foot indexes in, hands chamber here, back out, chop, step and punch. Feet come together, hands come together, start your rainbow, step back. So I'm in shingle chassis facing there, just like I did before as I come through, set my stance as I strike. Basic foam three, lock, um, chill sun ill row, lock, and then like chill sun ill row, you're gonna do center punch, but your hands are gonna chamber, cup and saucer on the back hip. Okay, we're gonna do the three quarter turn and watch your back straight. Okay, so here, soko rip chassis, okay, come to chungle chassis, soko rip, show you how long chassis, see where my back is? This is gonna get you hit in the face, back is flat. Back through Soko Rip, push. Step and punch. Look at your feet. Same thing now when we go the other way. Hands come to a diamond on your left hip. Make sure that you have a wide enough chingle chassis before you do that palm strike. Soko Rip, back is straight. Back to your hips, push. Low block, step and punch. Look to the back. Low block, chamber your hips away so they can come back for the center block. Punch, chamber your hips away so they can rotate into the high block. Punch, chamber your hips away so they can rotate into the high block. Punch, punch, show you how to chassis. So, so go rip, back is straight. Show you how to chassis, back through so go rip, and push. Next one, hand come, hands come knuckles together on your right hip because it's a reinforced block. Come all the way to Chingle Chassis. Look at your feet. Make sure they're wide enough. Reinforce block. Soko rip. Choi hot on Chassis. Back flat, whatever height you're at. Soko rip. Push. Hands come to knuckles on your left hip. Right foot comes in. Right foot comes out. Look at your feet. Make sure you're in Chingle Chassis. Soko rip. Choi hot on Chassis. Back flat. Soko rip. And push. Okay, if you are green, brown, red, five times through, focusing on those things. Um, first degree black belts, row high. I chamber here, lock. Now the next one, they're both gonna be palms up, so they have to both start palms down, lock. Grab the person's head, pull them in, headbutt them as you bring your knee up into their groin. Then get out of the way. Make sure that your knee is clear so they don't fall on it. Somehow that doesn't feel right. Just trying to, I mean, just do it without quite so much talking. One, two. Okay, I wanna be facing front when I clear. Then I'm gonna step forward, look at your feet, make sure you're in jungle chassis. Step forward, punch, punch. Block low, okay, targets the sides, just soak up chassis, knees out. Pull to um, Japanese cat stance facing the corner. Put the weight onto the front leg, you're chasing somebody down here. Get out of the way, step forward, step forward again, punch, punch. Sweep, they're down, punch. Get out of the way. Step forward and block. This time there's no step. Punch, punch. Somebody grabs your hand. Motion defense. Their face is right there. Crescent kick, they grab again. Motion defense. Uh, you punch. Face, you punch. New attacker behind you, turn. Come up under their chin with your forearm and then an uppercut. Block, slow, block center. Okay, five times. Um, second and third degree black belts, Pilsan. I'm gonna add a few more moves from last week. So we started here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, Three, one, two, 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I chop, pull in, grab the throat. Next count, I'm gonna pull the throat down into me as I front kick, orbit, hit them in the temple, look, new attacker. Then I'm gonna go towards that corner with the spinning knife. So my right foot steps to the corner, I chop, I keep spinning in the same direction, land, left foot chops, left hand chops, right hand chops. I don't step on that next one. Then my right foot steps forward, block, and I jump 360 degrees and block again. One more step, I step back, center block punch, just like we do through this whole form. Okay, there's a couple of self-defenses, and what I want you to do is I want you to focus on what you're hitting. Okay, so the first one, somebody grabs your wrist. Doesn't matter which hand they grab it with. I'm gonna step back, they grab this hand, I'm gonna step back with the foot underneath it. If I step back with the other foot, my hand stays in the same place. If I step back with this foot and leave my hand there, it's not really useful either. What I wanna do is I wanna step that whole side of my body back and pull. And there's a good chance at that point they're gonna let go. As I step back, I'm gonna bring the other hand up to my ear, just like as if I was doing a low block. And as I step back, my back of my fist is gonna hit their wrist. If this didn't pull them off balance, hopefully that will make them let go. Now their face should be right here, punches for control. Okay, so from here, they grab, I step back and pull, hand comes up. It's, so it's all gonna to happen together, but I want you to think about the pieces. Step back and pull, chamber, strike, and then violence. Okay, so focus on what you're hitting. Next one is um, two hand, two from the back, hidden sword. Okay, so the first thing you're doing, they choke you, you squish their fingers. So you're attacking their fingers, which does two things. It makes them think, well, maybe I don't want to do this after all. And it relieves some of the pressure on your breathing. Then I'm gonna take my left hand. You can do it the other way if you want. I always do it this way. I take my left hand and hide it. That's the hidden sword. And tuck my tiny little step just enough so I can tuck my left foot behind. Then I'm going to turn and I'm going to slam my forearm into the back of their elbow. So they should let go and it's gonna hurt. And then depending on what you're hitting depends on how tall your partner is. If your partner is about the same height as you are, a little bit shorter, you can punch them in the neck, side of the neck or in the temple. Okay, reaching up to punch like this isn't really useful. So if they're that much taller, think about floating ribs and then the knee. Okay, so squish the fingers, back of the elbow, height appropriate target, neck, side, uh, temple, neck, ribs, knee. And then the last one that we're gonna do is a hair grab. Somebody grabs your hair, your hair. They're gonna weave their fingers into your hair and grab. You're gonna take your hands, you're gonna put them on top like this and smush them. You lean back here. Now you're smushing their fingers and stressing their wrist. You're gonna take your hand and turn it over like this so that your thumb is on the top of their wrist. Grab their hand, turn to the outside so you're stressing their wrist and slam your, your bicep into the back of their elbow. Okay, so here, trap, pull them off balance, turn your hand over, grab, break their elbow. Okay, don't break their elbow if you're practicing with somebody. So what I'd like you to do is find someone in your house, same person that you did your, you're gonna practice your weapons on, and very slowly go through this and see where the targets are so that you have them in your head so that when you practice, if you have to practice in the air, you know what you're hitting. Okay, if you are Tung Shido beginner, you're doing single stick. Everybody else single stick is a review for you. So you need to do this. Uh, but we're gonna talk today, we're gonna focus on what your target is, what you're hitting. So okay, first thing I want you to think about when you hold your stick, hand at the bottom, 
left hand at the bottom, right hand over it. So if you've got the butt end of the stick out so that you have this end as a weapon and this end is also a weapon. So this is just a courtesy and I step back and I cover my head. So I want you to do this with the video playing or in the mirror so that you can see. See how far my stick is out? If it's back here, it's not covering my head. If it's like this, it's not covering my head. It's gotta be out here and it's angled down. So if someone hits it, their stick slides down. If I have it this way and their stick slides down, it's gonna hit my fingers and they're not gonna be happy. Okay, so I step back, I protect my head. When we do this with a partner, we're hitting their stick. But I want you to think about what your target should be on the person right now. Okay, so right here, I'm hitting either the temple or the side of the neck. Inside of the knee, face. Comes all the way around. I hit the temple or the side of the neck again. I follow. I cover my head in case they're trying to hit me. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to hit. From the, I'm going to hit their collarbone and drag it all the way across their body. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to, I have my right foot forward. I'm going to pump with my left leg, front kick with my right, step back with my right foot. Okay, so now you can follow along with me on the other side. I have my left foot back, stick is in my left hand. It's covering my head. I always have my other hand here to protect my face. Step forward temple or side of the neck, inside or front of the knee, face, orbit, side of the head, follow it, cover your head again, step forward, break their collarbone, drag the stick all the way across their body, switch it back to your right hand, come back to blood cup, and courtesy. Okay, so if you're a tongue sitter beginner, you're practicing that. Ideally, you'll find somebody in your house to practice it with. The best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else. Okay, so everybody else remember that too because you're gonna have to do the same thing with the two sticks. Okay, so now two sticks. I want you, when we do this, we do this as a set and we hit the other person's stick. So I want you to think about what you're actually hitting on the person. Side of the head, ribs, other side of the head. Side of the head, ribs, other side of the head. And then we do it again and then we bring them here. Okay, here I am hitting the knee. Knee, other side of the knee, knee. They shouldn't still be standing at this point, but just in case, I take the other leg. Okay, so I'd like you to practice this with somebody. Um, it, you can do it with a stick, but you're just touching, okay? If they don't trust you, use a noodle or use a pencil. Okay, so I want you to see where on the person you're hitting. Right here, temple, okay? Ribs, this can either be temple again or ribs again. Same thing, one, two, this third one can either come across at head height or at body height. And then when you do these, don't hit anybody's knee, but put your stick there, one, two. So the first two are both hitting the same side of the knee. And the third one, one, two, comes back and hits the other side. One, two, three. Okay, so I want you to do this with the body there. If whoever the body in your house is, you may absolutely not hit me with your sticks. Do it with pencil. Noodles if you have it. Fingers work fine. But I want you to see where the actual targets are on somebody because we tend to do these against each other's sticks and it just becomes a dance with the sticks and you're not thinking about what you're hitting. Okay, basic bow form one. We've been all the way through it plenty of times. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on what we're hitting. Okay, so first move, you're making sure somebody stays at a distance from you and you're coming down and breaking their collarbone. New attacker coming from there, we're going to turn into them, hit them in the ribs, step forward, hit them in the ribs on the other side. Somebody's attacking your knee. You're going to pull your knee back out of the way, bring the bow down, swing it across so that it pushes their bow out of the way. Step forward, drop the front end down, break their collarbone. Groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. They try to hit you with their bow, lean back so that you're out, further out of range, sweep their bow out of their hand, stab them in the ribs. Same thing on the other side, you turn to look, somebody's coming at your knee, watch the knee. Step into Chinkle Chopsy, break their collarbone. 
groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. Then they come at you with the bow, sweep their bow out of their hand, stab them in the ribs. New attacker, somebody coming at you from this direction with the bow. Same thing, sweep it out of the way, stab. They're backing up, stab, stab. I'm gonna bring this over the top and hit them, depending on how tall they are, okay? I could be hitting them in the side of the neck here or the ribs, or I could even, in the form, the bow stays here, but I could even bring it down and hit them in the knee. The next move is just because it looks cool as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we're here and we come back. Now there's somebody behind us. I'm going to stab them and pull the bow back out. Now I look and they're still back there. So I'm going to turn to them, break the collarbone, groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. I look, somebody's attacking me overhead. <clears throat> I block. Okay, in the form, we're actually telling you to bring the bow way out to the side as if someone is attacking your knee. What I want you to think about from a self-defense point of view, if I block here, I can hit the inside of their knee here and the inside of their other knee. Okay, so when you're doing the form, it needs to be here, but just like all other forms, you can change up your interpretation a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna bring my bow in. This is a chamber. I look, someone's behind me. I'm gonna take this end of the bow and hit them with it. And then I gotta come back bow comes over the top, right hand end hits. Okay, so I want you to do the same thing. I want you to do that a couple more times. And if you can find somebody in your house who is willing to be your crash test dummy, if for, for lack of a better word, do this with the target. Don't hit them, but see where on that person your bow would actually hit. Okay, black belt bow form. Again, we're thinking about targets, what we're protecting on ourselves or what we're hitting on someone else. So we start here, this is just to get your bow. And I'm gonna step back, somebody's, I step back, someone goes to hit that leg with it, their stick or a kick. This would be longer, it would come almost to the floor. I'm just keeping my weight centered. I don't wanna shift into that one because if they hit, I don't want all my weight there to get hit. Okay, I'm gonna protect that knee and then I'm gonna protect this knee. Then I'm gonna bring the bow over and hit someone in their collarbone. They're gonna step back and try to hit me again, I'm gonna block. So when I block, my bow needs to be at an angle here so their bow doesn't hit my head and slides down. Ribs, attack coming from that side block, hit their ribs, stab. Same thing on the other side. Block, ribs, stab. Attack coming from that side. Block. I'm gonna switch my hand and bring the top end over and hit their ribs. Pull it up. Take their head. Stab the throat. pose over the dead body. Probably not, but it just seems appropriate there. Okay, so I want you to practice that a bunch of times. And again, if you can put a body there so you can see what you're hitting, give the body a stick so that you have something to block and know what you're hitting with each strike. 